I'll be honest, I don't think my mother ordered a defective baby. So it was quite a surprise when the stork turned up with me. In fact, I miss the days when the stork flew through the air, delivering a baby to someone's home. But he probably got the sack after fucking up my mum's order. <laughs> Judging by that track record, the stork now works for the Amazon website. <laughs> Nowadays, babies are usually delivered by the pilot of Madonna's private jet instead. I was six months old when I got very ill, and I developed cerebral palsy as a result. It was never really explained what had happened to me, probably because the doctors didn't have Google to check in those days. <laughs> in my case, it meant that I lost my speech, I walk very funny, and my right side of my body is weaker than my left. If that wasn't bad enough, I developed epilepsy later on in my life. Form an orderly cue, ladies. <laughs> my parents did try to get rid of me, but even in the old days, it cost way too much to send the baby back to the baby shop. The price of postage was ridiculous. Putting a baby in a cardboard box and sealing it up was frowned upon too. So my parents were stuck with me. Apparently, they did write to Jimmy Savile to see if he could fix it. <laughs> but not even he was interested. <coughs> that was a huge blow to my confidence when I found out. Apparently, he was worried that I would talk. Or <laughs> not, as the case may be. If I'm being serious, though, I couldn't have wished for a better family. In fact, I would say that my disability made them even more loving. Now I don't really think about what happened to me as a baby. And I don't really care. As long as I have my family, nothing else matters. They've always been amazingly supportive and helped me follow my dreams. And admittedly, wanting to do stand-up comedy when you don't have a voice is a pretty fucked up dream. <laughs> and I wouldn't be here without their support. So if you don't like my show, you know who to blame. <laughs>